Hey guys, it's Justin from LitTube. You know, we haven't had any fantasy football content so far on this channel, but we are going to get started with that this upcoming season. And I wanted to go ahead and put out our first fantasy football analysis video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be covering the fantasy football outlook for the Baltimore Ravens. So I'm going to be covering all the important players on the Baltimore Ravens, what their expectations are going into this 2017 season. Um, and I'm going to give you my projections of how I think each player is likely to finish and give you some background data to support uh, that analysis. So we're going to start with Joe Flacco first, and then we're going to go and talk about the receivers, tight ends, and running backs as well. Okay, guys, as I said, we're going to be starting with Joe Flacco, the quarterback. So Joe Flacco's only had one top 10 fantasy uh, finish on his resume, um, and that was back in 2010. He was the 10th best quarterback for that year in fantasy. Last year in fantasy, he came in at quarterback 19, uh, which is a QB2, uh, so basically a backup quarterback for fantasy. So that's kind of what his range is. You know, he's going to be somewhere between like the 20th best quarterback and the 10th best. So he's really just a QB2. Um, to sum this all up, but let me give you a little more analysis on top of that, because last year he actually uh, had a career high in pass attempts, 672 attempts. The Ravens were at the top of the league for pass attempts last year, believe it or not. Um, he had 4,317 passing yards, which is pretty good, but the problem was he only had 20 passing touchdowns to 15 interceptions, so that's where his performance is really lacking. Not enough touchdowns and too many interceptions. He also tacked on two rushing touchdowns. So overall, 22 total TDs, 15 INTs, and a little over 4,000 yards passes. That's just not good enough, okay? He had, you know, going back through his game log, he had like two or three really good games where he finished as a, a QB1 for that particular week. But other than that, he was very poor. So Flacco, at best, is a guy you stream based on matchups. He's more of like a daily fantasy play. For season-long leagues, I'm not going to be drafting him. But if you're in a deep league or a two-quarterback league, it may make sense to throw a, a, a dart on Flacco uh, late in your draft. But otherwise, don't don't go out and draft him as your starting quarterback uh, to take a homer or whatever because uh, he's not going to do that well. Jeremy Macklin is the new addition to the Baltimore Ravens at wide receiver, and they really needed him with the departure of Kamar Aiken and the retirement of Steve Smith, uh, because if they did not bring in a receiver, they weren't going to really have many options to throw to. Uh, but they bring in Macklin, which I believe was a great move, um, but if we go back and analyze Macklin's last season with the Chiefs, uh, first of all, he didn't play 16 games. He played like 12 games. He was injured for a good chunk of the season. Uh, he finished as the 73rd ranked receiver in PPR, so that's pretty damn bad. Um, but having said that, uh, you know, why did he finish that low? Part of it was injury, but he also had career lows in targets, receptions, yards, touchdowns, yards per reception, and yards per target after catch last year. So he posted some career lows, just overall had a bad season, but... To tell you the truth, guys, I like him to rebound with the Baltimore Ravens because, number one, there's a need for him there. Uh, the Ravens had the most pass attempts last year. Uh, Macklin has a pretty versatile skill set. I, I believe he can play in the slot and also play on the outside. I think he has enough speed that he can get downfield, but he's also more of a possession guy. So he has, he's a nice balanced receiver that brings a lot of things to the table. And I think out of the receivers, he's going to lead, lead the team in targets. So he, I actually like him as a solid wide receiver, too. Uh, in PPR in particular, I think in standard, maybe more of a low-end wide receiver too, but he's in that wide receiver two range for me. Um, he's really a guy that I expect a lot out of this year on the Ravens. Again, the main thing you got to look out for is his health, because he's had several seasons where he didn't play 16 games, and that's the one thing you got to look out for in Macklin, but at the end of the day, every player to some degree has injury risk, so don't let th that shy you away from taking a chance on him. The fact he had a bad year last year means he's probably going to go with some value in your drafts. So if you're in PPR, I would take a shot on him, honestly, as one of your, one of your uh, later receivers in the draft. 
All right, guys, let's talk about Mike Wallace, because Mike Wallace was a new addition to the Ravens last year, and he enjoyed a bit of a bounce back uh, in his career uh, as he went over 1,000 receiving yards and had four receiving touchdowns. Pretty decent season, really, especially for your first year on a new team. But here's the thing about Mike Wallace, is that I liked him a lot more for fantasy before we found out the news of Jeremy Macklin signing with the Ravens. If Mike Wallace would have went into the season as the de facto number one receiver for the Ravens, would have loved him a lot more, would have been targeting him in my, all my leagues, particularly standard. Um, but since Macklin joined, that really limits the upside of Mike Wallace. And I think at this point, you look at him more as just a burner that's going to occasionally get you a couple really good games in standard formats. Um, that's kind of how I view him. I'd view him more as a flex than a wide receiver, too, because of the Macklin addition. Um, and also the fact that Wallace is now getting into that territory where age is going to start creeping up on him a bit. He's over 30 years old. I, he still has juice. You know, I think he's going to be able to, to burn some corners, get downfield. I actually think he might be able to post more touchdowns this year than he did last year. Um, so you're going to get a couple big plays out of him. But overall, I think the addition of Macklin caps his upside. And I don't think he's going to do any better than last season. Um, he may come up a little bit on touchdowns, but I think yardage-wise, reception-wise, he's not going to be able to improve on last year's numbers in that regard. So best-case scenario for Wallace, I see, again, around 1,000 yards receiving, and maybe he comes up to like five, six, or seven touchdowns. Um, that's best-case scenario. But again, Wallace, not a guy I'm targeting in PPR leagues uh, unless he falls really, really late in the draft. Uh, but for a standard league where those burners and catches don't matter as much, uh, yeah, I'd take Wallace on my team in that kind of format. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. You're in a standard league late in your draft. Take a flyer on him. All right, guys, I'm not going to spend too much time on Brashad Perriman. He projects to be the third receiver in this Ravens passing attack. Um, you know, this is a guy that was selected in the first round of the 2015 NFL draft by the Ravens and missed his entire rookie campaign. He came back the following year and he was okay for them, but fantasy wise, uh, receiver number 76 in PPR for, uh, for, um, uh, fantasy scoring. So that's not going to win you any fantasy leagues, but some people think that Perriman's going to take a step forward. You know, he does have uh, a really good athletic profile. This guy's really fast. Uh, he definitely, you know, boasts that uh, burner skill set like Mike Wallace does, and, at a, and he's much younger. Um, the potential's there for Perriman, but honestly, if you're asking my opinion on all this, I think Perriman's going to be one of those cases where the metrics don't end up equaling production. You know, I think, if anything, Perriman's going to take longer to break out um, because he did miss his rookie year. So now you're talking about this is basically his second year, even though it's his third year, and he's behind established options in Macklin and Wallace. So I don't see a breakout season for this this year for Perriman. I'm not going to be drafting him. Um, and I think that, you know, Perriman, it's going to be interesting going forward. Is this guy going to be labeled a bust or is he going to finally turn it on? But I think if he turns it on, it's not going to be this year. So I think this is a guy to monitor throughout this season. If he ends up doing well, scoop him off of waivers. But don't waste a draft pick on him. That's my opinion. All right, guys. So now we're moving on to the Baltimore Ravens running backs. And I'm going to start with the new addition, which is Danny Woodhead. He came from the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. Um, last year, Woodhead only played two games. He was injured for the vast majority of the season due to an, a torn ACL, um, and that's uh, especially bad since the fact that he's an old running back and then had that kind of injury. He's going to be 32 years old this season. Um, so, so that's that's pretty bad. But um, you know, Woodhead on the plus side, you know, his two years with San Diego, uh, or, or well, not Los Angeles Chargers, but. He had 78 and a half receptions was his average over that two-year span where he actually uh, played a full season. So that's not including last year, but if you average his full seasons with the Chargers, 78 and a half receptions average between those two seasons. Wow. Um, so if you're playing in a PPR league, you know what this guy can do. Uh, but the, always the concern with Woodhead more than anything else is his health. 
Um, so will is he going to re-aggravate the, the, uh, the knee injury? Um, is he going to get injured in some other way? That's what you have to be concerned with with this pick. And also you have to be concerned with the fact that Woodhead's not coming in as the, the workhorse. You know, he's going to be the third down specialist, which – with Joe Flacco, could be a valuable role. We all remember that year when Flacco was dumping it off to Ray Rice as a check down. I could honestly see that happening a lot with Woodhead. Um, you also factor in that the Ravens were tops in uh, pass attempts last year. That, that bodes well for Woodhead. But again, for me, this is how I'm approaching Woodhead in fantasy, is that if I'm playing in a PPR league, I will draft him. Uh, and I will start him the first four weeks when Kenneth Dixon is suspended. Uh, but after that, um, he's probably only going to be a flex option at that point. And in standard leagues, I'm not touching him at all. So that's the way to approach it. Is Woodhead's a guy you probably want to try and get on your team in PPR if he's at the right value later in the draft. But if you're playing in a standard league where the receptions don't get you any points, don't bother drafting Woodhead. All right, guys, let's move on to Kenneth Dixon who is the running back I believe has the most upside in fantasy out of this entire Ravens backfield. And I'm going to tell you why. You know, first and foremost, Dixon was a rookie last year that was drafted in the fourth round. And going off of last year's stats, he finished as uh, running back 46 in PPR scoring, and that's without getting any touches the first four weeks. So on, uh, you know, on not a full season... Uh, he still amassed uh, a decent amount of production. Um, and then what's more impressive when you look at Dixon, though, is that according to Pro, uh, Pro Football Focus, he forced a missed tackle on 26 of his 88 carries, uh, so about a 30% rate, and that was the best among uh, running backs with at least 40 attempts. So he's one of the best in the league uh, last year at evading tackles. Um, and that's that's pretty impressive. And you look at Dixon, he profiles as a do-it-all back. You know, a guy that is capable of being a workhorse. He showed in college that he's effective in the receiving game. He showed a little bit about that last year in limited work. Um, but the problem is Dixon suspended the first four weeks of the season. And that when he comes back, he's going to have to battle with Terrence West and Danny Woodhead for touches. So... Uh, he's a guy that you're going to draft later if you're going to target him, but he does have the most upside out of this backfield, and if should anything happen to West or Woodhead, uh, then Dixon's going to have an expanded role and be a really nice value. So he's a guy worth taking a shot on uh, in the draft. As much as I want to tout Terrence West, being that he was a classmate of mine at Towson University, um, I just can't do it, people. I can't do it. And here's the reason. Now, sure, you go back and you look at what Terrence West did last year in the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, he was an 1,000-yard rusher, so there's that. Uh, he did have six touchdowns. And overall, at the end of the year, he finished as the 23rd-ranked running back in PPR scoring. So that's like a mid-to-low-end RB2. Not bad. Not bad at all. But here's the problem, is the situation totally changes going into this next year because Terrence West last year, he started to cede touches progressively to Kenneth Dixon, who is the superior talent. Now, how do, you, how do I know that Kenneth Dixon's the superior talent? Well, you look at Terrence West's profile, okay? He, yes, he was incredibly dominant at a small school in college, Towson University. He accounted for 47.3% of that Towson offense's production. Um, he also had 6.4 yards per carry, which is 81st percentile. Um, but here is the proof in the pudding. Uh, it, Terrence West has a Spark X score of 103.2, which is 22nd percentile among running backs at the NFL level. So he's a non-athlete. And th that is the proof. He's a replacement level back because... He, while he was dominant in college, it was at a small school, so you have to discount that. And then you also have to look at the fact that he, his athleticism is not high enough to make up for that. Um, so that is why he's going to lose out to Kenneth Dixon. Um, this is a guy that I don't believe is worth drafting in fantasy unless you're in a very deep standard format league and you're just going to use him the first four weeks when Dixon's suspended. But after Dixon's suspended, I think Dixon's going to come back 
and quickly take over that backfield. So Terrence West isn't a guy I want any part of in fantasy football this year. He's a nice complimentary piece for the Ravens, and I wish the best for him, uh, the fact that we both went to the same college. But he's not a guy I can tout. He's not a guy I can recommend for you to draft. So buyer beware on Terrence West. Woodhead and Dixon are the guys you want to target in this backfield. All right, guys, and let's wrap this up by talking about the Baltimore Ravens tight end situation for 2017 season. Uh, it looks like a top of the depth chart at tight end, you're factoring in three guys, Crockett Gilmore, Max Williams, and Ben Watson. As we all know, or maybe don't all, maybe not all of us know this, but Dennis Pitta went down uh, with a season-ending injury before the preseason's even started, so he's done. Uh, we all know that Pitta had a lot of upside playing with Joe Flacco as far as fantasy is concerned, but he's always been a a health uh, uh, injury risk, um, and that proved to be fateful um, this year as well. So it's going to come down to one of these three guys, Gilmore, Williams, or Watson, and since I'm releasing this video before the uh, actual uh, preseason or the start of the regular season, there's a lot of not much clarity for the tight end situation. Uh, what I do know is that someone is going to have value here because we know how much Joe Flacco likes to throw to his tight ends. Um, now it's a question of, you know, is it going to be Ben Watson winning that starting job and getting the majority of the targets? Ben Watson didn't play last year or most of last year because he was hurt. Crockett Gilmore is serviceable, but I don't see him being the um, a big time option for them. So if I'm betting on any of these guys this year, which I wouldn't do unless I'm playing in a deep fantasy league, but I would go with Max Williams and, and bank on the third-year breakout. Uh, you know, Max Williams, while not the most athletically gifted tight end, uh, he broke out at a, a very early age when he was in college and was very dominant at his college. Um, so that's really the, the biggest sample size we have to go off of for Max Williams after really only being in the NFL for, for two years up to this point, and we know how rookie tight ends take time to develop, and even at a year two, they need time to develop some more. So will we see the three-year breakout for Max Williams? It's possible. Um, but I think in order for that to be a lock to happen, uh, Watson would have to go down with an injury too. You know, if it came down to that point where it's just Williams and Gilmore competing for targets, I think Williams beats him out and actually becomes a, a good sleeper tight end at that point. But again, guys, I think the value in the Ravens' offense has more to do with their receivers and their running backs than it does their quarterback or their tight end. So to sum up all this, you're playing in a really deep league, go ahead and take a shot on Watson or, or Williams. Um, otherwise, I would just ignore the tight end uh, situation for the Ravens until we get a lot more clarity um, at the beginning of the season. These can be waiver wire pickups. You don't need to draft a Ravens tight end. Um, but that's, uh, you know, that, that wraps up this video. Just wanted to touch on the tight ends real quick. So now we got quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight ends done. Uh, as far as the defense and the kicker, I mean, the defense should be serviceable. You know, it's a Ravens defense. You'll be able to stream based on matchups. And if you're going to start uh, draft them as your only defense, that's fine. Just don't reach on them and draft them uh, like before one of the last rounds. I mean, typically most defenses should go in the last couple rounds. Uh, and I would not reach on a Ravens D. Um, Justin Tucker is the best kicker. Okay, so if you want to you want to pull T Justin Tucker around early and have the best kicker in the league, you can do that. Uh, I think he will actually outscore Goskowski and be the number one kicker. So that's uh, that covers all the Ravens players that are worthy of note. And uh, we will continue to release more videos like this. Hopefully, more formal setting on our LSO. Uh, Lit Sports Online uh, show, but we'll also be doing face-to-face -face updates as well for fantasy football, so stay tuned.